Hello again. I've started a series of videos about a project that I'm working on that involves nanowave communications, modulating the light of an LED and using it to send a signal over great distances. In the first video of this series, I included a short high-speed clip of me laying out a circuit using the Fritzing software. Because some people like to know more about how Fritzing works and they're interested in the specific details, I'm including right now as kind of a sidebar of the series the complete video that I used to create that short clip. So if you're one of those people who is interested in knowing exactly what each of those parts does and how I put them together, you might enjoy this piece here. I'm going to begin this part of the project by laying out the components that I plan to put together on the screen here using Fritzing. I've accessed the Adafruit library. They give us a nice template here of their uh, Permaproto half-size breadboard, which I'm going to use for this project. Just so that everybody understands, these columns here of pins are connected together. So if I click here, you'll see the yellow there indicates that those five points are all connected together. Up here we have some rails and so if I click here you see rail right here is set up and marked to be our plus 5 volts. Above it we have ground or minus and we have the same thing down below but notice that the plus voltage rail at the bottom and the plus rail voltage of the rail at the top are not connected together. So now that we know how that works, let's put the components on the board. I'll simply drag um, our Atmega over here. We'll park him right there. You can see how it straddles the gap on our board, just as it would if this was an ordinary breadboard. Our little switch over here also straddles, and we'll put that in here, just like that. Again, if I click here, you see that these all go to that pin. One of the cool things about Fritzing is that it knows all about this chip. So that if I put my pointer right on that pin, it tells me that that is the Arduino digital pin number 13. Over here, we'll see this pin is going to be ground. Down here, we'll see that this pin is going to be our 5 volts, our VCC. So it's kind of convenient to be able to just put your pointer on a pin and you'll get to see uh, what you want it to be. Take a look at our switch though here. These little switches do something interesting when you put them on a breadboard. Remember when I click on a dot up here, it shows you everything that's connected to it? Well, watch what happens. Our connection has gone all the way through the board. So both sides of the board, all of column 11, is now joined because we have the switch there. If I go right next door to it, you see they're not co joined completely through. The same is through with this side here. So that's something we can take advantage of. Let's take a couple minutes here and hook up all of the 5 volts that go to the various places on our Atmega 328. First thing I'm going to do is link the two rails together. I'll just drag a wire from the top positive rail down to the bottom positive rail. Notice that when I do that now, if I click on one of the rail uh, points here, that they light up in yellow on both halves of the board. I have joined them together. Well, we need to bring in 5 volts to the VCC here on our pin. There's D4. Here it is right here, VCC. I don't need to take it from here. I can come all the way down here and just simply run a short jumper from here to there. And now, again, if we test our rail, you'll see that we have brought 5 volts into the VCC pin on our Atmega 328. We will also need 5 volts on the other side of the Atmega. I'll run one from here to there. This will be the analog reference pin. We'll just give it 5 volts and let it ride there. And then the one next to it is our uh, analog VCC pin we'll put it on 5 volts as well. Just like that. Again, now take a look at where all our connections are. Now let's do ground. Ground comes in right next to these guys here. So I'm going to drag a line from here down to there, but I'm going to change the color to black to indicate that that's ground. 
and you'll see down here that this is going to pin 22 on the chip which is the ground pin on this particular side of our Atmega. Now if we look down here you'll see this is also ground. This is the Atmega chip pin 8, not to be confused with the Arduino pin 8. So we have ground on both sides. So I could put the ground in down here as well. We have ground there. But th I'm not going to do that. Let me remove that wire. I need to put a crystal and do some things in this area. So I'm going to do something a little tricky. I'm going to take a connection from our ground pin here and drag it diagonally down to there. Let's change the color so that it's easy to see what I'm doing here. I want to run this wire on the bottom side of the board. It won't be up here where we see it on top of the chip. It's going to be underneath the board and it allows me to get ground to this pin over here from this side. So if I touch up here to show you where ground goes, you can see that it comes all the way through and goes in to these locations. Pin 1 of the Atmega 328 is a real special pin. This is our reset pin. This pin needs to be put at 5 volts in order for the chip to follow its programming. We need to be sure that this pin stays at 5 volts. So we're going to use something called a pull-up resistor to do that. I have a 1K ohm or 1000 ohm resistor here. I'm going to bring this in. I'm going to set it right in here so that it goes from 5 volts here up to our pin 1 on the Atmega. That resistor will keep the reset pin at 5 volts. We're going to use the switch over here to intercept that 5 volts, ground it, and that will allow us to reset the Atmega chip. So let's get some ground to this switch. I'm going to bring ground, which is up here, down to the top of our 11th column here. And we'll make this one black again. Notice that that brings ground through our switch. At the same time, we can take a wire from here to there, and now we have tied the two ground rails together. So if I touch up here, you'll see that we have ground on both halves of the board now by going through our switch. So this line right here does the same job as this red wire does over here. When the button is pushed, this ground will come over to this column here. So all we need to do is run a wire from here to there. Let's make a different color here. And what that does is when the button is pushed, it connects pin 1 to ground and resets the Atmega. One of the cool things that we can do with the Permaproto board that we can't do with a conventional breadboard is we can break the rules. We know that these pins are all tied together here, which sort of locks us in on a breadboard to what we can do with those pins. It sort of dictates what our results are going to be. We can break the rules, however, and we're going to do that with this crystal. You see over here that pin 9 on the Atmega328 goes to one of the leads of the crystal, and right next to it, pin 10 goes to the other lead. These are really close together here, and you can see that our crystal, the spacing is quite different. What we're going to do is put our crystal in from here to here, which would ground it, but we'll go on the underneath side of the board and cut the trace right in here. If we cut the trace on the underside of the board, we have these four points now still connected together, but they're not going to be connected to ground through the circuit that we've created up here. Unfortunately, the template that we have to work with here in Fritzing doesn't allow for me to show any kind of cut traces. So it's going to continue to show connections where I won't have them because it doesn't know about my cut traces. But that will allow me to bring the crystal in. I'll bring it right in here, just like this. And remember, it's not really connected to that pin up there because of our cut trace. But we want it to be connected to this guy over here. So to do that, I will just run a short connection from here to there, like that. Change the color so it's a little easier to see in there. 
it'll actually be a bare wire. Finally, let's add our two 22 picofarad capacitors. These connect the crystal to ground at both pins. So we'll just drag one of them in here and I'll set him there. And we'll bring the other one in here and set him there. Now the actual capacitors that I'm using don't look like these blue ones here. They're smaller and they're red, but they'll go in the same places. Well, what you see here basically now is an Arduino. All we have to do is come up with 5 volts supply and ground and you could run your programs. But what if you want to program this chip while it's on your board? Well, let me show you how we can do that. I'll just kind of slide things over here. I have a few more parts that we can use. Mainly this little male header pin right here. It's three pins. I'm going to bring those in and I'm going to put them right there. Well, let's talk about what they can do for us. This pin right here is connected to the reset. We need that if you want to program using the Arduino IDE. This one right here is connected to pin 2 on the Atmega. If you look up there, you'll see that this is our digital pin 0 or the receive pin. And this one over here is our D1 pin, but also the TX pin, the transmit pin. Using RX and TX and reset, we can program this chip. The way you do it is take an ordinary Arduino Uno and remove the Atmega328 chip from it. Then you link these pins together. Run RX to the RX on the Arduino, TX to the TX on the Arduino, and reset to the reset on the Arduino. You'll need one other set of connections. We'll need to bring 5 volts and ground between the two as well. So with 5 wires, we've got ground and 5 volts, RX, TX, and reset, you can program the chip on your board with the IDE on your computer thinking it's the chip in your Arduino Uno. I want to use this board to drive a very high-powered Luxion red LED. And to do that, I've purchased something called a Buck Puck LED driver. It has a series of pins on the bottom that I want to plug in to this project. I've got a little female header here with seven pins that I'm going to place right here in this location. Pins six and seven on the Buck Puck are the output that connect directly to the LED. I'll just take a male header here and I'm going to set it up here so that these pins are connected to the last two pins on our header down below. Notice that it says 8 up above but that's because I don't have the first pin in position 1. So these two pins right here will go to our high powered LED. The next pin over here is a control pin and we need to connect that to pin 9 on our Arduino which is way over here D9. So I'm gonna run a line all the way from here over to there to connect those together we will make that orange. And you see now if I click on our pin here it comes all the way over to pin 9 with, uh, on the Arduino. It's a digital pin 9 on the Arduino. This next one over here is a reference pin on the buck puck. And one of the cool things that they tell us about this is that this can be used to produce a regulated 5 volts that can run a microcontroller. That's where we're going to get the 5 volts for our Atmega chip. So I'll connect this right here up to uh, 5 volts. And we'll make it red. So now we're bringing 5 volts into all the connections on the board that are supposed to have 5 volts. There's one more thing kind of as a precautionary measure. I like to add in an extra capacitor. Usually I put it in right in this area right here next to the Atmega chip and it goes between the 5 volt uh, VCC and ground and I've kind of crowded myself in here. Uh, I'll put it down here because these points go in there. And This is a capacitor, it's a 
a 0 0.01 microfarad capacitor that I'm just going to put that in here and it sort of protects the circuit from uh, any little spikes that might come along. It definitely protects our microcontroller and you usually like to put it as close to the the chip as possible I haven't given myself space here if I was laying this out on a printed circuit board I would give myself space and it would be right in here right in this area here but so I'll, I'll put it down here it's close you can see here this is going right up to the the VCC pin on the uh, at mega chip and if uh, I look at ground here you see it's going right in there we, we're running it in this direction in yellow there in odd places but this should be a precautionary measure that i like to include finally we need to provide a path for our voltage into this circuit our buck puck which will be here in this area right here takes an input voltage a dc input voltage of anywhere from 7 to 32 volts i need a place to bring that in i'll just take this jumper here and duplicate it and there he is down here. And I'll bring it over here. I'll rotate him. And I'll just drop him in right there. Now, I'll be bringing in a fairly high DC voltage, much higher than what we want in the rest of our circuit. And it's going to come in here, and it needs to go to this third pin on the buck puck. And in order to do that, I will just run a wire from here to there. Uh, we'll make this one purple. And then I will cut the trace right in this area here. The high voltage will come in and only go this far and then it'll come down to our buck puck. The regulated 5 volts will come out in here and then it will feed the rest of the circuit. But because we cut the trace in here, we are keeping the high voltage off of all these pins around here. Well, that's pretty much the plan. I've looked at it. I've studied it. I think I'm ready to build it up. Let me do that, and then we'll change gears. I'll show you what it looks like, and we'll give it a try. Well, of course, you can see the whole project in part one of this series. It's kind of interesting that as we work this thing out, we read the data sheets, we think we can do something, and we actually get it to the point where we can implement it and find out it doesn't work uh, as we saw with the situation of trying to power the at mega 328 with the reference pin from the buck puck it simply didn't work and the solution was not difficult at all so take a look at that video you'll see how we worked around it that's the nature of the beast if we're going to do a video blog like this or I guess they call them vlogs is that right vlogs um, you're gonna see what works and also you get to see what doesn't work and I'm sure that as we progress along the way on this project we'll see other things that don't go quite the way we want them but I hope you enjoyed this video that you'll continue to follow along and if you haven't already subscribed to this channel I certainly hope you do and those of us that provide video content here on YouTube really appreciate it when you click the like button and of course the share button so we'll see you next time. Until then, 73s.